Hey, how on earth can you successfully market your business in a compassionate industry where marketing and sales are dirty words? Easy. Listen in and we'll show you how. Well, I said, welcome to a small business marketing show where successful small business owners share their souls to take your marketing straight to the lead. Now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie. And welcome back, listeners, to another episode of Australia's number one marketing show. I'm your host, Timbo Reed. You, so much more importantly, you're a motivated business owner and you are ready to crank out some amazingly good marketing to grow that business of yours into the empire it deserves to be. And that is what we help you do around here. Well done for coming back, if it's your second time or your 200th time around, and welcome, a big small business, big marketing, welcome if this is your first time. Hey, uh, big show today, got a country vet and long-time listener, Braden Collins, who takes us through how he's grown two vet clinics thanks to some very smart and, get this, simple, yeah, I know, marketing ideas. I've got some news from a listener who's launched Australia's first social beer enterprise or social enterprise beer. You know what I mean. Beer that does good. (laughs) Probably still gives you a hangover. And I have got a motivational marketing quote from social media doyon Gary Vaynerchuk. Yep, big show. And it is brought to you by the very good folk at where? You tell me. That's it. Net Registry. They get your online marketing sorted. Check out their exclusive listener packages over at netregistry.com.au forward slash Timbo. There are some mighty good ones there. And we're also, you and me, we're made possible by 99designs, the world's largest graphic design marketplace where designers from around the world compete to give you a design you'll love, guaranteed. And you can get a free $99 upgrade over at 99designs.com forward slash Timbo. Hey, uh, yeah, yep, you guessed it. As per usual, there's marketing G-O-L-D dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Do you need a speaker for your next conference? Recommend Timbo to your event organiser. Or better still, book him. Tim Reed. that's R-E-I-D dot com dot A-U. Hey, uh... How's business? How is your business? Going all right? Having a good week or two, I hope? I thought it'd be time for a bit of a check-in. I got some good news. I got some bad news. And then I got some good news. The good news is (laughs) there's never been a better time to market your business, ever, right? Never forget that. The bad news is I'll be producing one episode per week for the next month or so. Yeah. My long time, well, throughout the sort of second half of this year, sponsor, key person of influence, the budget's dried up for the time being. So uh, that makes putting out a Friday show difficult, but that's okay. We've got a Tuesday show. That'll continue forever. Well, as long as I can anyway, you know what I mean working on a couple of other sponsors as we speak. I know you can't wait for the ads in the show, hey? So I will get them back as soon as uh, as soon as humanly possible. But you know, they make the show possible. If you know anyone who, or any business, you know, who might want to sponsor the show, big business that loves small business, hit me up at tim at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com and I'll have a chat to them. Hey, um, back to the good news. I am in discussions. I need good vibes on this one, team. Put it out there to the universe. I am in discussions with an American-based company that supplies in-flight audio and video content some, to some rather major airlines. It's early days, but I'm in good discussions, right? So just put it out there to the universe and say, hey, big company, put Tim's show on the airline. They need it. The passengers need it. Hey, and uh, here's some good news. Um, listen to James Grugon. Got that wrong, I reckon. But he's created Australia's first social enterprise beer. And he sent me this email. I just wanted to give him a bit of love to help him along because I think it's a good idea. He says, hey, Timbo, I've just launched Australia's first social enterprise beer, the Good Beer Co. 
The concept's really simple. Good beer that does good. You can check it out at goodbeerco.com.au. We're running a crowdfund campaign to take pre-orders for our first beer, Great Barrier Reef it's called, which we which will be brewed by our first craft brewery partner, Bargara Brewing Company, and raises funds for our first charity, which is the Australian Marine Conservation Society. We give at least 50% of our profits to our charity partners. What a great idea. We'll be partnering with good beer brewers across Australia. We aim to brew a number of good beers over the coming year and rolling out throughout Australia in February, March 2016. So check it out, team, thegoodbeerco.com.au. Well, there you go. That's my week. Good news, bad news. That's all right. Things are looking up. Hope you're having a really, really good one. Now let's get on with the show. Righto, let's get stuck in to today's guest. It is Braden Collins. He is a country vet and he owns the Bunbury Vets Clinics, Vet Clinics in Western Australia. Uh, he sent me an email recently, ticked all the marketing boxes, I've got to tell you. And in fact, he went through how he's applied the marketing lessons from this show and elsewhere to grow these two vet clinics. And I'm like reading the email going, tick, 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 tick. So I didn't even need to prepare questions. We just work our way through the email, which starts off by saying, I won't read the whole thing, but I'll paste it in the show notes. He says, g'day, Timbo. How do you look at marketing and sales in an industry where marketing is very inward looking? Hey, the opposition is doing that, so I'll do the same thing, just a little bit better, we say. And sales is a dirty word in what is seen as a compassionate industry. I'm the marketing manager and practice owner and vet and handyman, yes, and small business owner at the Bunbury and Eaton Vet Clinics. And uh, he then goes on to explain the marketing he does. It's a brilliant, brilliant email. He's doing some great stuff. The bottom line is he's implementing a lot of the ideas he's learned on this show and he's winning, hey? Action creates reaction. So settle back. If you've got a dog or a cat, give him a cuddle. I started off by asking Braden the obvious question. If he was an animal, what would he be and why? Um, I reckon I'd be a Labrador would probably be what I'd be. Um, I think more specifically than just a dog because Labradors are their own special breed. Um, I think I'm probably my main characteristic is I'm very easily distracted and I think Labradors are a lot, lot like that. They'll come into a room and be distracted by everything and I think that pretty much sums me, sums me up. I'm, I'm distracted by the next shiny object. No, well, uh, we'll talk about that because I am too, but Labradors also love a feed and uh, digging the odd <laughs> yeah. hole. Yep, yep, no, definitely like a feed, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, love it. Hey, talk about distractions because we live in a world of distractions. Bright, shiny objects continue to appear. I was only talking to my kids last night about the Apple Watch and, you know, like it's just another bright, shiny object. I'm not sure it's going to add any value to our lives. But um, how do you manage your, uh, would it be fair to say, your ADD? Um, a, a lot of it, I mean, in, within business, my business partner's very good at pulling me back, kind of back onto, onto track where I should be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, otherwise I find I just have to physically remo- remove myself from, from my distractions. So put, tuck myself into the office, put the phone out, out of the office and yeah, try to sort of discipline myself not to be checking Facebook at my emails every two minutes. And Isn't that yeah. fascinating? Gosh, you know, like how the, 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 more than half the world I'm sure is caught up in that distraction and, um, who was I talking to the other day? And, and it's really, it's setting me on a, I can feel my path about to veer away from kind of like spending too much time on social media and focus on creating great content, just if we're talking in the marketing context, you know, because, yeah. you know, that time, you're a smart fellow, you're a vet. How many years oh. do you need to start to be a vet? Uh, five years. It's just gone up to six years Come now. On, mate. So, You've yeah, got a bit pre- of grey matter upstairs, yet you are distracted by something that's probably not <laughs> producing um, a lot of results except creating a bit of dopamine. Yeah, I think that's what, what it comes down to, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, I mean, I think as a vet we actually I, I really see the sort of animal side of people and I, you can really see a lot of these behaviours that people do, so the easy distractions and kind of, yeah, kind of the desire to mm. be, or kind of have the next shiny thing. You see a lot of that in the animal kingdom and it really just does come straight across from animals. We, we really haven't evolved as far as we think sometimes and, yeah, no matter how much we think that we're smart and we've evolved, yeah, we've still got that, that basic animal instinct there yeah. I want that. It looks nice, so I'm going to have it. Now, Braden, you have written me an email, mate, that 
When I read it, the email listeners was a bit of a pitch from Braden to suggest that he would make a good interviewee on the show. But, mate, in this email, you are just – you're detailing the marketing that you're doing for your two veterinary clinics. And I'm just going, tick, tick, tick. You know, you're like, it's, it's what I would do. And I thought, oh, well, let's explore that. So normally I would have a list of kind of general questions to keep this conversation on track. <laughs> But I don't think we need it, mate. I've just got this email in front of me. Yeah. Because yep. you're doing some really interesting stuff. And, and listeners, what's really cool about what Braden's doing is it's not rocket surgery. <laughs> you no. know? Would you no. agree with that, Braden? Before oh, you de- definitely. It's it's very, very simple stuff. Um, and it's just really a case of, I mean, for me, as soon as I heard about some of this stuff, I went, geez, that's, that's just so logical. I should be doing that. Yeah. So, no, I think it's the sort of thing where anyone can do it and... Yeah, it, it, it's pretty high impact stuff. I find on the whole. And Braden, where did you hear about this stuff that you're about to explain? Um, I mean, a lot of it. You I think say it's, on the show, mate. Don't think about it. Just say on the small business big marketing show. <laughs> yeah. It's a leading question. Yep, oh, that's <laughs> definitely where I've had my, my main inspiration from. Yeah. <laughs> no, go. What's your true answer? Um, I, I think <laughs> I mean, the, with that kind of, we've, we're quite limited in the marketing we can do. We can't claim superiority or kind of put other bets down so what we really have to look at doing with our marketing is, is building trust I think and I've always sort of had this feeling that we should be educating our clients a lot more than, than we are because clients just don't understand kind of what needs to be done and we've got all this knowledge but we, we tend to hold on to it almost kind of jealously hot guarding it thinking well the clients have to come to us to to get that information and that's our chance to to sell to them and make some money from them whereas to me I always had this feeling that we should be giving this information to clients because they don't know that when they've got to come in for vaccinations they don't know how to look after their dog's teeth we can be giving all this information to people and it it builds trust but it also kind of yeah it leads down the the path of, of of creating work for us as well and I mean I guess where I kind of really started to learn a lot more from it is one of my um, kids was in hospital needing a, a rel- fortunately relatively minor surgery and while I was sitting bedside with him I had nothing to do so yeah I thought I'd have a listen to a few podcasts and yours Tim is one of the ones Early. I came across and it actually made a lot of sense this helpful marketing and yeah it, it sort of yeah I think it really has steered me in that right direction and yeah it, it's really a guiding um, sort of philosophy for our marketing now. I love it, mate. All right, let's get stuck in and detail what you do do. Uh, Listeners, what I will tell you, and I'll cut to the bottom of Braden's email, is his secret sauce is that he sets aside eight hours a week for marketing. Now, Braden, we've just lost half the audience. (laughs) (laughs) But you know what? It's time to get over it, isn't it? Because clearly for you, you enjoy it. It's a hobby. Yeah, I I love it. I get a real buzz out of of the marketing and... um, it's, it's the sort of thing where I, I fell into the job, really. I mean, when we purchased our first practice, Joe and I have very di- different personalities. Joe is a very precise person, and if he was doing the marketing, I don't think anything would actually get produced because you'd have to make sure kind of the grammar was perfect, the spelling was perfect, and there was no way it could be misinterpreted. Whereas for me, I've always had that kind of philosophy of I'll get in, get something done, kind of spit it out the back end and that, that'll be good enough. And so, yeah, I, I kind of I fell into the job when we divided the, the positions. But, yeah, I, I really enjoy it and, yeah, sort of getting the, the feedback from the clients and, and seeing the, the response to the marketing. It's, it's a really big buzz, I reckon. What do you mean response to your marketing outside of more customers or retaining customers? Are you actually having people come in and comment on your marketing? Yeah, people coming in saying, look, I really enjoyed that article you wrote or Brilliant. kind of we, when we get things in the paper. I mean, we're, I'm lucky now in my profession in that we have animals come in all the time and people love animals. It's it's an absolute goldmine for Facebook and newspaper yeah. articles and things like that. So it's pretty easy for us to get an interesting case, give the paper a call and they'll um, come in, get some photos and, and it creates kind of a good, good place for us to market ourselves. It allows information to be passed on and builds that trust with clients. But yeah, kind of I mean, just in the last week, I've been in two of the local papers and we've got another article lined up and, yeah, it's it's great little bits of information. Um, how, did, how did you – getting your first article in is the hard one. If it's a good one, the the editor generally asks you back. How did you get your first bit of publicity? 
Um, just by um, trying to produce a fairly good um, little article for them, I guess ultimately it comes down to making it easy for, for journalists. They're really tight on time now. Um, they're expected to produce a lot more content than they ever had with less staff. So if you can produce a, an article which has got some really good sound bites for them, it's pretty well structured, something where they can almost cut and paste it into a... Where'd you learn all that? Um, that's been a little bit of trial and error, really. Um, I've certainly had a few articles that I've sent off to them and I haven't heard back, but uh, uh, some of it, <laughs> I think, yeah, yeah. Also, writing a lot of these um, kind of um, bits of helpful marketing, I, I, I've learned which headlines work. And so trying to get the editor's uh, attention is just the same as trying to get someone else's attention. A good headline. Is, is that a, a headline stuff. for the article or for the email that you're sending? For, for the email, I think yeah. you know, one of the battles is to actually get them to open the email. Give, because, can, you, can you recall off the top of your head an example of a headline that gets an email opened? Um, the, one of the most recent ones was Killer um, Dog Virus Strikes Bunbury. Um, that's certainly oh, oh, got, got things opened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, it's, it's sort of hard for, for people to, to walk, go past that one. And that, wait, that wait, one actually wait, got that, on That's a good page. headline. Was it true? Yeah, yep. Yeah, right. parvovirus, which is. Um, a, a really nasty virus. It kills about 80% of dogs that pick it up. Yeah, um, right. it's, we've seen it in Bunbury year after year, and we saw two cases on a weekend, and Monday morning I thought, well, this is a chance to, to get more dogs vaccinated because once they actually contract the disease, it's very, very hard for us to do much with it. It's very, very easy to prevent with vaccines being nearly 100% effective. So for me it was a great... It's a great little marketing opportunity, but more than anything, it's a great opportunity to get it out there. So, look, people come in and vaccinate your dogs, and we had probably around 30 people come in and get their dogs vaccinated as, as a result of that article. So it was a, a really worthwhile little um, exercise, that. Whether you know it or not, and I want to know how you do it, Braden. you have your marketing radar on by the sounds of it. So here you are in your practice on a weekend. Two, two dogs come in, present with a particular virus, and something... <laughs> something, is it the front or the back of the brain or the <laughs> left yeah. or the right, I don't know, something triggers in you that, that says there's an article, there's a yep. Facebook update, there's a, there's a blog. You know, like, how does that happen? Um, I think it, it, it's a habit as much as anything. I, mm. I, I'm always looking for things that, that we can actually, um, yeah, I guess it has to entertain people. I mean, ultimately, a lot of Facebook and things like that, they have to be entertaining as well and it's informative. Um, but... And ultimately, it has to pass the test of do other people care? No, and no, but, but, but more to the point, going back a step, it's like yep. your radar. You are, you are always looking, as a business owner, you are looking for stories, research, um, things that you yep. could either create, that you could create great marketing content from, yeah? Yeah, and a lot of that comes from actually setting that time aside because it's yeah. easy to get buried in the day-to-day -day of, a, of a business and as soon as you can start to set a few hours a day aside, you can actually put your radar on and go, look, what can I be doing now? Or if you're actually forcing yourself to do stuff, then you have to actively look for it. So it's not really a passive um, sort of procedure. It, it is something where you actively do kind of have a look through the books, see what's coming in, ask the receptionists what they're seeing at the moment, what problems people are coming to them with, and that's where you can really target your, your marketing for, for that time of year because okay. a lot of our stuff is quite seasonal as well, so it needs to all change as, as the seasons go on. Okay, let's talk about seasonal in a minute, but I'm just I'm following this email because it is so well structured, Braden, that I, I have to just stick to it, mate, because in the, in <laughs> no the next worries. paragraph... Um, you say that you actually purchased your first clinic in 2012, three years ago, and yep. you doubled its turnover in yeah. three years. Yep. Um, then something quite drastic happened, which we'll touch on. But what 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 was the magic sauce, mate, for doubling turnover in three years? Um, for that one, it, it was actually just work, working hard. Um, we started off... Um, we first purchased the clinic, Joe and I, Joe's my business partner, we were both working for the people who own this, this branch clinic and they were very much treating it as a branch clinic. So they had a, a big clinic or have a big clinic on the edge of town um, and the, the other clinic in town, um, which is the older of the clinics and a little bit run down, was really being treated as a bit of a branch clinic and just ticking it along almost to stop someone else from coming into town. Um, yeah, right. So they were trying to almost fill a gap in the market. Bit of a without, blocker. Yeah, effectively they were blocking with it. And we saw that it's a, it was a great location. It was 
kind of had a lot of history there. But also there were no no clinics in town which were actually doing much in the way of marketing. So we very much saw an opportunity to get in there and, and do some very basic marketing. I mean, just having a Facebook page, we were pretty much the first vets in Bunbury to be doing that. And, I mean, that's pretty late to be getting into the Facebook thing kind of 2012. But, Not really. But, no, I, yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't. It's not too late now to get into the Facebook thing. No, no, but I guess relatively speaking for a group of businesses within an area not to have a Facebook page, um, yeah, it was it, it made it easy for us. Mm-hmm. And also um, Google AdWords, no one else was or st- and no one else still is doing um, Google AdWords in, in the Bunbury region, which just means that our, our, our clicks to our website are, are incredibly cheap. And, I mean, for some of the keywords we're paying kind of, 50 60 cents for someone to land on a website so it it became very easy but the vet vet world is also very much a a word of mouth sort of um world so people will ask their friends who they recommend and just by really offering a really good service i think we probably were a bit overstaffed and it meant we could really turn on the charm and it just yeah exploded from there how many vets in bunbury um in the greater bunbury area there is now five clinics okay Um, that's a bit of competition Yeah, yeah, and I'm, and and clearly, I don't know. Tell me, do you operate on price? Um, price is something that we actually try to take out of the equation. Um, now, I guess we very much look at aiming for the for the service over the price mm-hmm. because I mean a couple of reasons for that. One is I think we can do much better for the animals if we're not competing on price and. Kind of, I think what there's probably around. We work on the assumption there's probably around a third of people who, who all they care about is price, and that's not who we're going to be able to service well. For us, it's very much been been based on offering a, a really good service, and probably a, a, an example of that is when animals are, are desexed. That's been traditionally one of the areas that vets compete on, offer a low price to get people in the door to have their pets desexed. But part of that is some of the local vets weren't including things like pain relief in the price they were giving people uh-huh. over the phone and intravenous fluids during the procedure and, and all these other things, which to us, they were they were critical. So we had to really move the focus away from price and make it really about quality and, and all about what's best for the animals. And, and that seemed to really work for us. Most of the dedicated pet owners, that they're not after the cheapest um, vet in town. They're after the person who's going to really look after their pet well and <laughs> yeah. they trust. Uh, yeah, you're talking about my wife right there, uh, Brayden. <laughs> uh, we've got a little Labradoodle, Mr Charlie yeah. Bucket is his name. And, uh, well, I think we'd all, all five of us in the family here would bend over backwards for Mr Bucket. Uh, yeah. But uh, things can get expensive. You must have some crazy uh, – all vets must have some wonderful stories of just owners that would die for their, for their pets. Yeah, there's some owners where they come in and it's very much uh, here's a blank check, do whatever it takes. And, <laughs> yeah, give yeah. him a little uh, a nail nail bath and maybe if you could do an eyelash tint as well. <laughs> yep, yeah, and they come in with the little diamond collars on and all sorts. Yeah. Oh, I love it. So, okay, you doubled in three years and then you say you got a bit cocky. You purchased a second clinic and the perfect storm happened. You had a road ripped up outside your clinic and a new one opened up just down the road. Yeah, yeah, geez, we learned a lot in that um, six months. Um, How was that, mate? It literally like, did you just think, oh, my God, you know, we're in, yep. a, we're in a whole lot of strife? Yeah, so we purchased, um, we pay a, you pay a fair bit for goodwill for a, for a vet clinic and we also purchased the property associated with it. So our loan was, was pretty yeah. huge. Um, and when we agreed on the on the purchase. I mean, there were a few other things going on in the background which were also causing us issues. Like the practice was, the bloke was kind of heading towards retirement so wasn't really pushing the clinic. So between actually agreeing on the price of the sale and the sale going through, which took six months, the turnover had already dropped 20%, which brings it kind of dropped or puts it below the profit margin or wipes out your profit margin, Mm -hmm. already puts you at a bit of a loss. And then... um, the major shopping centre across the road was getting redeveloped, so they ripped out the roads outside our clinic, which took about two months to get done. So that dropped turnover another twenty to thirty percent, and we kind of were just getting to the point of recovering, and then someone opened up down the road, and yeah, that's that stung us again. So what, what happens in this situation? Do you look at your partner, is it Joe, and you yeah. say, I mean, was there a was there a crisis meeting? Was there a there moment was a, in time where you just literally sat down and eyeballed each other and said, <laughs> "Right, we, do we keep going?" 
Yeah, I mean, there wasn't really an option to not keep going. We had too much money invested in it, um, and we knew that if we didn't make this work, that was it was going to affect our lives pretty much forever to clear the loans and and pick ourselves up again. So, yeah, there was certainly a, mm. a few kind of yeah sitting around having a few beers, discussing what we can do and um, whether we just kind of put our heads down and and hope for the best, or whether we actually got to really roll up our sleeves and. And try to do something about it. And I mean, Joe and I are the sort. We're, we're still, still I, I, th- I think we're fairly young still. I mean, we're getting into the late thirties, but we're still young enough to be pretty enthusiastic about about our jobs and and about our businesses. And yeah, we we thought, well, we need to get a little bit of help to to get things ticking along and and get some ideas. And yeah, so we we sort of really started pushing our marketing. So marketing marketing is the silver bullet to get you out of this rut. Is that true? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Love yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hey, so. welcome to the Small Business Big Marketing <laughs> Show. Hey, listeners, I'm speaking to Braden Collins, who is a vet. He is in Bunbury. He's got two clinics over in Western Australia. Before I uh, interrogate him on some other wonderful marketing that he's doing, here's a word from a sponsor that can lighten your marketing load. Support for this show comes from 99designs, where dozens of designers compete to deliver a fast, affordable design you'll love. Speaking of love, their big cheese, Patrick Llewellyn, recently compared 99designs to a dating site. We really think of contests almost like the dating paradigm. You go to a nightclub, it's noisy, there's a lot of people to meet, you get to meet a lot of people, and if you're lucky, you know, at the end of that process, you might meet someone, right? And then you go on and and, and have dates. And so a contest is kind of like that paradigm. You put up your proposal, lots of designers submit their ideas, and then you start to whittle down to a few of the ones that really resonate with you. And then ultimately, you pick one of them. And once you've picked that one designer, the chances of you going on to work with that designer to get other things designed is actually very high. 99 Designs, where love is in the air. For a free $99 upgrade on your first design, visit 99designs.com forward slash Timbo. Get on Timbo's mailing list over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Support for this show comes from Net Registry. Recently, I was Skyping it up with Verity Ma, their Chief Marketing Officer, when the line deteriorated. She thought it may be because she had loads of browsers open, at which point I'm like, why so many browsers? Well, because websites appear differently on different browsers. So if I run multiple, then I can get a sense of how our websites are tracking across different browsers and customers' websites. Net Registry, where attention to detail rules. Visit netregistry.com.au forward slash Timbo for a website that works on, well, all browsers. So, Braden, what did you do, mate? What did you do to dig yourself out? Yeah, um, did a few things. I mean, I really got productive on the on the helpful marketing and writing a lot of articles for our for our website. Um, I was actually effectively repurposing them a little bit and using them as a sort of a newspaper column, which we were, we were paying for that. So it was done as an advertorial. Um, we're in the process of actually negotiating with one of the newspapers to have that as a regular column, but not paying for it, which will be great if we can sort that. But it was a very tactical tactical series of articles I wrote um, with the intention of turning, turning it into a into a, a book on basically dog ownership. So the articles covered everything from how to select a new puppy through vaccinations, basic health care, desexing, um, weight control, um, some very basic first aid sort of information. So over a few months I wrote that series of articles. How many? Oh, I reckon would have been somewhere around 30 or thereabouts. And, and are these so, blog posts or are they articles that appear in sort of a knowledge centre part of your website? Um, most of them are just blog posts. Right, okay. um, I don't quite have my website sort of set up well enough at this point. On, um, I've got some basic information. Eight hours a, eight, eight hours a week. Right? <laughs> yeah, I reckon I could probably do 40 hours a week and I'd struggle <laughs> to keep up still. So, you, yeah. okay, so you've got 30 articles. Yep. They're averaging, what are we talking, 300? Yeah, three hundred to four fifty words. Four fifty so, words, yep, covering so, all aspects of pet care. Yep, loving yep. it so far. You're yep. putting them on your blog post. You're putting, sorry, you're putting them on your website as blog posts. Yep. You are. You're buying some advertorial space in the local newspaper, so they're running over there, cut and paste. Yep. And then you turn them into a book. What are we talking? Yep. A hard, a printed book. 
Um, we haven't printed it yet. It's just an ebook on our website at the moment. Love it. Um, tossing up whether to, to do a printed copy, but the problem we get with a printed copy is actually getting the, well, actually tracing the the, the clients through. So at the moment, tracing the what? Or following the clients through to actually, or following the people who get the book through to actually becoming a client. Oh, um, mate, can I can I so, offer you some advice there? Yeah. Do, do it. Just do yeah. it. I'm not sure. Um, think of it as a glorified business card. You're already yep. people already taking your business card. Yep. You know, there's a sponsor of this show, Key Person of Influence. They give yep. away their books. Um, yep. They do track because they request an email address. Well, they need and they also need a postal address yep. in order to send you a hard copy of their book. But yep. they also uh, another friend of the show, Andrew Griffiths, who I do segments of funny business with who's a prolific author he's of the opinion that you just give away that book because it'll yep. come and it'll return in spades yeah yeah and i mean that's something that we tossed up whether to put it into I, and i guess we probably should put be putting it into local pet stores and grooming oh, parlors and places yeah. like that with a very much here you go here's a free copy because it'll, it'll be like i reckon you'll get it down to a unit cost if it's not color i reckon yep. 250 three bucks a yep. unit if you print yep. 500 yeah, yeah, it's a pretty good little investment, isn't it? Oh yeah. Anyway, anyway, I, I interrupted then. So you've you've turned this into an ebook. Um, yep. Is that then on the website for people to download in exchange for an email address or something? Yep, that's that's correct. Uh, so clever. yeah, I mean, at the moment, uh, that's all I'm doing with it at the moment. But the plan from here is once we get the the email address, is to be starting sending them a series of, of emails. So effectively, once again, breaking the book down into its into its posts once again, adding a little bit more detail for them and attaching a video. And that video can talk them through the um, through that section of the book. Mm-hmm. And that should hopefully. I guess it, it it makes me a bit more or makes them familiar with me once again because I think ultimately, although I don't really have a, a face for television or anything like that, I think ultimately <laughs> we do need to try to get someone in the clinic to be sort of the face of Bunbury Meat and Bet Clinics, and so I've I've sort of been stuck with that role as as the marketing person. So the more we can get get them, I guess. Per, my, yeah, it's the old story of people buy from people. So if I can become the person that they're buying from, then I think that really puts us ahead. How do you feel about that? I, I had an interview earlier today. Uh, I'm not sure whether it'll go out before or after our chat, but it was with a fellow who owns a travel agent for disabled people, and yeah. he's very humble, very an, an, an introvert, yet yeah. he was kind of feeling as though he needed to put himself out there more as the face yeah. of that business. Yeah. Uh, and he struggled with that a bit because he's like, it's kind of not what I do, but it's kind of what I have to do. Yeah. Um, I don't reckon you were struggling that much. I reckon you'd probably love to get in front of the camera a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting used to it. I, I very much am an introvert. I think vets on the whole are introverts because we're the sort of people who will go kind of sit down and study for hours and hours on end so we can get into the course and get through the course. So, yeah, quite, quite by, our, by our very nature, we're, we're very sort of shy people effectively. But so it, it really was having to break out of my comfort zone to do a lot of this stuff. But, yeah, at the end of the day, I am a business owner. I have to do this stuff if if I want, it, want the business to grow and do what it can do. So, yeah, yeah sometimes you just got to roll up your sleeves and do it. Great. Well, I think you answered my question, which was how do you do that? Because one of the things I do in my keynotes is I actually stop and get people to pull out their phone and film their first marketing video there and then <laughs> by simply answering yep. a frequently asked question. And, you know, we debrief it afterwards and it's like, wow, that really took me out of my comfort zone. But, you know, wasn't as bad as I thought because I'm sharing knowledge that I already have. And, yeah. hey, I'm the business owner, so it, it's probably incumbent upon me to do it. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what it's like here. Yeah. yeah, mate. Uh, loving the story so far. Ticking a lot of boxes, Braden. Oh, <laughs> trying to get there through, through them, yeah. <laughs> What's quite interesting to me and uh, – uh, this is a little bit self-indulgent, indulgent, but as listeners know, I am self-indulgent, <laughs> is you're mirroring a lot of my language. Uh, you talk about helpful marketing. You talk about people buy from people. And to me, I feel that a level of success in the sense that it's, it's sunk in with you and it's starting, it's working for you, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty incredible the response we've got. I mean, when I have a look at our website traffic, I mean, the helpful marketing that we've jumped from around 850 hits per month on a website to around 3,500 hits per month. And that's just basically answering people's questions. And, and where we started with our helpful marketing is just 
going to our receptionist saying, right, what are the first, what are the top ten questions you get every day? Write those down, and there's your first ten blog articles. That's what people want to know, kind of most of the time. So let's totally. actually make life easy for them. Let's answer those questions for them. Because and, because listeners understand this. Whatever question the receptionist at Bunbury Vet is being asked is the same question that is being typed into Google. And yep. if Google can find a page on a website that answers that question, guess where they're going to rank it? Like yep. that's how it works. Yep, and that's exactly what we've found. I mean, a lot of the stuff that we've actually produced won't, won't necessarily relate directly to our to our clinic even. Like one of our biggest um, pages that get hit on is our list of dog kennels in the local area because nowhere was actually lit, just coming up with a list of, of the dog kennels. So I thought, well... That's what people are looking for. Let's create a page for them. And that, that on its own gets about 130 hits per month. And these are potentially quite dedicated dog owners. They're the sort of people who will look after, make sure their animals looked after while they're away. So they're good clients and they're good people to really be helping out and, and answering the questions. And once again, it just builds that, that relationship between the client and the clinic and, and doing it quite subtly. Oh, but you're also building a relationship between the clinic and the kennel owners. Yep, yep. Because so, they're going to then start referring you business, surely. Yep, and, yeah, we do find most of the kennel owners do use our, our services. So, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good two-way street there. Three-way street, mate, I love it. Um, okay, so just tell me, with those articles, because going from 850 website visits a month to 3,500 is significant, besides yep. putting the article up there with a headline and some, you know, natural keyword kind of inclusion... Yeah. You, is there anything else you're doing that's a bit geeky, like metadata or getting backlinks, or are you simply just posting that article? Really just posting the yeah. article. Um, I'm using um, Facebook a little bit more to direct people to yeah. our website, and that's something I think I'll, I've, I've only really started doing over the last few months is rather than just putting an article on the Facebook page, have the start of the article there and and the link across to to our, our website, and that gives us the chance to have a have a little pop up and try to capture some some emails and and kind of yeah build that relationship that way. So that that's something that we've only really just started doing. But yeah, most of it is just organic search. But mm. it, it is the questions that people are, are typing into Google. And I mean, another thing that we really get with our helpful marketing with with um with our clients is people are going to try to ask Google what's wrong with their dog anyway. So, I mean, we call it Dr. Google where people will ask Dr. Google what's wrong with their dog, why is the dog itchy? And if, if, if it can be us actually answering that question for them, we know that they, they're getting the right information, they're getting kind of information that we believe is correct and that, once again, it builds that relationship but it also leads to a better outcome for the dog because there's some absolute rubbish on the internet and the more we can be giving the, the good quality stuff out there, then I think we're going to end up with a, with a better outcome for everyone. There's a there's a, a blog there's an article in that right there. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, geez. Tell me, um, you are doing some fantastic stuff online, uh, and as I say, you know, like online has created a whole lot of opportunities for small business owners to market their businesses, but it doesn't mean that offline marketing um, is dead. Uh, but I, I, what what's your, what role does advertising letterbox drops play in your marketing um, mix these days? At this at this point, very little. Yeah, um, I thought, I thought because it would. We were, yeah, we were struggling to, to measure it as much as anything. So, I mean, we've dropped the advertorial we were doing in the newspaper. The other thing which we were trying for a while, but when we tried to create some sort of um, or a page that people could head to to claim a, a, a deal, it was it was basically a, a people who moved into the area would receive a postcard saying kind of here's a discount on your first visit to the Bunbury Neaton Vet Clinics, head to this page for more information. Um, because theoretically when people move, that's a time where they're likely to change vets. Mm-hmm. People tend to actually be quite dedicated to their vets or at least have a fair degree of apathy when it comes to moving. And so... When, when they actually move, that's our great chance to, to pick up a client. But we found that there was actually very little of little coming from those sort of sources. So really our, our focus now is very much on the good quality, um, helpful marketing, the Google AdWords and the Facebook. And, and that's, yeah, that would be 90, 95% of our budget goes into that. Love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I kind of expected to hear the fact that you don't do a lot of offline stuff. Hey, Braden. um you're doing good things, buddy. Well done. Well done yeah. on creating. Just tell us, just as we finish, the eight hours that you do allocate a week, yeah. um, is that you just sitting down, writing articles, creating social media posts, looking for other opportunities to market your business? 
I mean, that's that's a lot of it. Um, a lot of it is also keeping an eye on, I guess, word of mouth, so checking what's being said about us online. So, I mean, it's always worth, I think, on a weekly basis, actually Googling yourself and your own business. Make sure there's nothing silly going out there. Word, um, you know what they call that? Word of mouth. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Yeah, I've got to, got to keep an eye out for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, some of it is, yeah, talking to sort of other potential, I guess, marketing partners. So um, like the local rescue organisations, we try to affiliate ourselves with one of those quite strongly and we've got a loyalty program that um, through that loyalty program we, we donate 2% of, um, of turnover to, to that um, rescue organisation. So mm-hmm. that becomes a fairly sort of – it needs a bit of managing that relationship but it works really well for us because – kind of yeah people love the rescued animal story that that's absolute gold when it comes to marketing um some of it is also training our staff and probably the really classic spot where we want where we need to train our staff and where we really focus on is when the clients are actually ringing for for things and particularly price because i find price is almost a default that people ring about mm-hmm. um, i mean for example when someone knows they need to get the dog sexed, they don't actually have much of a reference point of or an understanding of what to ask. So the first thing they actually do is is ask for a price. And yeah. what we've trained our staff is don't make it all about the price because if you just say the price, we know that other people are cheaper because they don't do they don't include the painkillers or don't include the intravenous fluids. But what we can do is that's a great chance for us to educate the client as to the value of what we do, but also build that rapport. So when someone rings up saying, look, can you give me a price on doing this? That what we expect our staff to be doing is kind of saying, oh, what sort of dog have you got? Oh, Golden Retriever, I love them. I've got one of those myself. Mm-hmm. They're great with the kids, aren't they? Have you got kids? What are, the, what are the kids' names? How old are they? Oh, that's a great age. And they actually build that relationship before they yeah, actually get right. onto price. And so keep, to me, the marketing is, is yeah, it's training the staff pretty much in every interaction with the with the clients. To me, that's that's marketing. And so, yeah, th- there's a lot, lot of different areas to focus on there. Rapport building, trust, familiarity, yeah. all of a sudden price becomes secondary, tertiary, the client, the customer becomes less price sensitive and yeah. particularly when you're dealing in both a high involvement purchase decision, which is what you have, plus yeah. an emotional one, um, yeah. you can embark on those discussions. And I know there'll be listeners who uh, have businesses that are less emotional, but there's always, there is always an emotional angle that you can find and... Um, yeah, uh, and, and if people like you, they're going to buy from you. And so correct. if you can just build that rapport with them, yeah, that's that's what they're going to care about at the end of the day. They're going to care about how you make them feel. And, yeah, if, if you make them feel kind of wanted and, and appreciated as a client, they, they will, will stick with you. Too true, mate. Hey, Braden, if you, were, if you were a Labrador, what would your name be? Boy, I mean, I, I've got a golden retriever called Marvin and I'd probably go with the same, same name of Marvin, Starvin' Marvin, <laughs> with my love of food. <laughs> Good on you, mate. Uh, All the best for the future. Thanks, Braden. Beauty. Thanks, Tim. And that is Braden Collins, (laughs) a.k.a. Marvin. (laughs) What a great name. Starvin' Marvin. (laughs) Nice fella, eh? Hey, I should have asked him what his porn name would be, you know, when you combine your first pet and the first street you live in. Oh, you don't? Oh, okay. It's just a game. Stick with me. Mine would be first pet Coco, first first street Bordeaux. So my porn name is Coco Bordeaux. Don't tell anyone that. Hey, uh, you can find out more about Braden's business at Bunbury, B-U-N-B-U-R-Y-Vets.com.au and hit him up on Twitter at Bunbury Vets. He'd love to hear you from you and uh, that you heard him on the show. I'd love that too. And I'll post the email that he sent me over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com in the show notes for episode 290. Okay, my top three learnings from that fireside chat with Braden. Thanks to the good guys at 99designs. Head over there to 99designs.com forward slash Timbo. You get a free $99 upgrade. Get something designed. Go on. A new brochure. Yeah, make that a kind of thing for the next week. And Net Registry, head over there, netregistry.com.au forward slash Timbo for three exclusive online marketing packages. So uh, top three, thanks to those guys. Number one, be helpful with your marketing. Share that mountain of knowledge you are standing on openly and freely knowing that you'll build a tribe of long-term loyal followers. Just do that. It works. Learning number two. Always have your marketing radar on. Be on the lookout for opportunities to promote your personal 
and your business brand and action one or two of them every now and then. Number three, adopt a philosophy of good enough because perfection gets in the way of production every time. That's a little bit, uh, some of you won't agree with that, but, you know, try it out. See how you go if you are a perfectionist. So what was your biggest takeaway? Head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com, put in the search box 290, this episode will come up, and you can leave me and Brayden a comment. Social media guru Gary Vaynerchuk once said, you can market your ass off, but if your product or service sucks, guess what? You're dead. Pretty harsh quote there by old G Vaynerchuk, but I think fairly true. Hey, you got to have a good product or service. Well, you won't have repeat business. You might sell it once, but not twice. Hey, uh, plenty of marketing gold coming your way in the weeks and months ahead, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already done over at iTunes or Stitcher. I actually use Downcast app to listen to my podcasts, of which I am doing more and more. Podcasts are becoming pretty much all I listen to these days. Love that. About time, hey? (laughs) And if you need any marketing uh, designed... Grab your free $99 design upgrade over at 99designs.com forward slash Timbo and you'll get a design you'll love in seven days, guaranteed. Be sure to use NetRegistry if you need a website or to get your website found, netregistry.com.au forward slash Timbo. They've got a $79 a month do-it-for-me website package that you may well love. Hey, uh, please thank Daryl Misson for the show's soundscape. And Lockie Dolly for the show's sound bed. Yeah, they're two different things. But don't worry, you don't need to know how they differ. You just need to thank those two wonderful human beings. Hey, if you want to surround yourself with other motivated business owners, speaking of wonderful human beings, then join the Small Business Big Marketing Forum over at crankmymarketing.com. 69 bucks a month, team. 30 day, no questions asked, guarantee. Get in there. Ask a marketing question or two. It's a good thing to do. If you need a speaker for an upcoming event, timreed.com.au. That's enough. Until next week, I am Timbo Reed. Always have been. Always will be. May your marketing be the absolute best marketing. Bye for now. <laughs>